Hi, my name is Ron Davies. I'm the head of economics here at UCD, and thanks for tuning in. Um, I just want to take a few minutes to give you a bit of an idea about what economics is, how we do economics at UCD, and why that might be a choice that you might be interested in making. So the first thing I really need to do is kind of get across what economics actually is. A lot of people have this idea economics is about how to make money, and it's not. Um, economics is a social science, and what it really boils down to is the idea of rational decision making. And what rationality means to an economist is predictable. There's a pattern to behavior. It doesn't mean it has to be sane behavior. You know, you might think about you know someone who is a heroin addict. I wouldn't necessarily call that you know a sane way to live your life, but it certainly is a predictable way people will behave. And when you look at that predictability, then you can start thinking about ways to change the environment or change the incentives to get people to alter their behavior. So that's sort of one part of economics, but then the other thing that we really like to think about is how the actions of one individual affect the choices made by another one. And so bringing those two ideas together, how one individual behaves and how that interacts in a bigger system is really kind of what economics is about at its heart. And when we do that, there are sort of two sets of tools that we bring to play. One of these is thinking about modeling, thinking about theory. How do you describe the pattern of behavior? And how do you put together this story about the way actions get made in order to predict the outcome? But then the other part of it is you got to take those predictions to the data. How do you take real world data, use that to estimate the size of effects and the impact that different policies or different choices may have on the outcomes? And the really important part of a degree in economics is it gives you both of these skill sets. And that's a really critical aspect of it because when you think about economics as this general framework of thinking about the way people make decisions and the way you can predict that behavior, what it does is it gives you a really good framework for designing fact-based policy. And that can be government policy, it can be firm level policy, or really whatever it is that you want. So what are the kinds of issues where you might want to bring economic tools to bear? Well, one thing right now on everybody's mind is COVID. So we have people in our school here at UCD in economics that are actively working with the Irish government to think about the way we're designing policies to deal with the COVID pandemic. How do you roll out different programs? How do you incentivize people to behave in certain ways to slow down the transmission, to try to flatten the curve? Um, so that's something that feels pretty far away from economics, thinking about diseases. But again, it's patterns of behavior. And how do you then influence that? Um, other things people look at, so I myself, I'm a trade economist in a lot of what I do, um, looking at Brexit. You know, what is Brexit going to do to the UK and to the Irish economy? But then there's all sorts of other issues. You can think about, you know, why is the cost of housing so high in Ireland? And what might we want to do about that? We can think about financial crises. Why do they happen? And is it really the best thing to stop them every single time? Or should you maybe let it burn through like a wildfire? You can think about immigration and how does that affect voting and social change. You can think about using policies to mitigate climate change. You can think about ways of using government programs to affect early childhood education and what that might mean down the line in terms of economic things like employment, but also bigger societal issues such as crime or whatever you want to think about. Um, or even like one of my pet projects is thinking about how aggressive should a self-driving car be. And that doesn't sound like economics at all, except it really is. Because what normally you would think is, okay, a self-driving car, if it pulls up and someone blows through the intersection, the self-driving car should stop every single time. But when you think about that pattern of behavior, what it does is it gives the human drivers on the road at the same time an incentive just to blow through, because they know the other guy's gonna stop. And so by having really passive self-driving cars, you're gonna generate more aggressive human drivers and you can actually increase the rate of accidents. And so again, it's just thinking about patterns of behavior and how those interact across different groups. And so, you know, econ has this really general skill set about thinking about a problem, predicting responses, taking it to data. So what can you do with that? Well, kind of anything you want. You find economists everywhere. And as a result, students that do economics at university tend to have the highest employment rate after graduation and tend to have the highest starting salaries, with the exception of the engineers. They do a little bit better on that one. 
So what kind of careers can you get into? You can become an economist. Uh, you can go work for a university, you can work in a think tank, you can work in the private sector, lots of jobs as, as just an actual economist there. You can go work for NGOs, non-government organizations like the World Bank or the IMF. Lots of different charities will have economists on board because they'll think about how do we design you know, the, the fundraising campaign that we want to run in order to elicit the right kind or the right amount of donations. Government uses lots and lots and lots of economists because they're really interested in implementing policy and they got to be aware of those unintended outcomes. When you have that data side, you can go deal with big data and go into data science. And so really any kind of job where you want to think about why people do what they do, how you can affect that, that's where you're going to end up finding economists. So if you want more information on that, we're going to do an online career event on November 18th. If you're interested, email us at economics at ucd.ie, and we'll get you the information for that. So that's why you should do economics. Why should you do econ at UCD? Flat out, UCD is the number one school of economics in Ireland in terms of our research, in terms of our teaching. Our classes are taught by economists who are global research leaders. The people that teach your classes are at the absolute forefront of what we understand in terms of economics, in terms of economic policy. And because of that research expertise, these same people are involved in working with governments, both the Irish government as well as the European government, to think about how we design policies, how we implement policies for the greater good. So, you know, that's one aspect of what we do. We take our research very seriously and we like being involved in the real world. But what that also does for us is it really gives us the ability to be excellent top grade teachers. And so, you know, bringing that real world experience, bringing the forefront of knowledge into the classroom is really what we aim for. So, you know, there's a lot that we do as well in terms of support for our students. So in your you know, mandatory first and second year classes, in addition to the lecture, we have small group tutorials to try to get people more of that small one-on-one -on -one kind of education experience. We run the Economic Support Center where we have someone who is around uh, currently is Monday through Thursday in the evenings where you just rock up and you have a question and that person is there to help you with what that question is. We have a mentoring program, and all of that is something we do just in economics. In addition, UCD has the Math Support Center and the Writing Center. And so all of this, we really try to give people the foundation they need to build on. Now, the other thing we aim for is a bit of flexibility for you to follow what it is that you're interested in. And I'll talk about some of the different options in just a minute. And the fat last thing is we have a very diverse body of faculty and students. So our school of economics in UCD is the only school of economics in Ireland that has the Athena Swan Bronze Award. And this is because we went through a process of thinking about gender diversity, how we deal with inclusion within our school and how we take it very, very seriously. So if you want to do econ at UCD, there are four different ways you can go at it. The first thing is to do the social science program, which is the DN700, um, or you can do the economic single major degree, which is DN710. In addition, you can do law and economics, which is done through the law school, obviously with a side order of economics, or you can do economics and finance, which we're involved with, in, along with accounting, finance, and some additional statistics, but that's actually run through the business school. So the two primary ways to do economics at UCD are either the social science degree or the single honors degree. So that social sciences degree is a four-year degree, and within that, there are three ways you can work econ into what you do. The first of these is to do it as a joint major with another social science subject. Second way is to do a major minor, so it's mostly econ and a bit of something else. And the third way is we have three thematic programs that we're involved in. Politics, philosophy and economics, econ, math and stats, as well as computational social science. And so those, again, just sort of give you kind of like a preformed package. But within the joint major, you get a lot more, a lot of flexibility to sort of tailor it to what you're interested in. So what can you do a joint major in? Um, so here's the list of them. The most common tends to be economics and politics. And then if you want to do minors, uh, in particular, you pull in the languages. So for me, when I was an undergraduate, I did economics and German. So that, that's also an option now. 
The other way to go about it is the single honors degree, and this one is a three-year degree. The social sciences is four. What the social science gives you is in year three, that's where you can do your internship or you can go overseas, which I think is a really great thing. But if you're really interested in econ and what you want is econ, econ with some more econ, that so single honors degree is a way to go. Because what it gives you is lots of economics. You get into the advanced modules even faster. There are classes that are specifically available to this group of students and the numbers are smaller. So it's a little more of that one-on-one -on -one feel. Plus at the end you get to do an in-depth research project on a, something that interests you. And there's all sorts of th different things that people will do. So I'm trying to think what people did with me last year. There was something on sanitation and mortality in rural Ireland. Um, lots of them on rugby. Um, all sorts of different things that people go into. But again, that shows you how flexible the tools you learn in economics are for what interests you. There is the possibility of switching from the four-year social sciences to the three-year single honors at the end of year one. That's something to also be aware of. So what are the classes you're going to take? So in the first year, everybody, regardless of whether it's DN 700 or 710, you take four classes. You take Introduction to Quantitative Economics. What this does is it gives you the mathematical foundation for the, what you're going to do in the rest of your classes. I'm not going to lie, there is some math in economics, and I'll come back to that in just a minute. You also do Intro to Econ. In second term, you do principles of microeconomics. Here's where you tend to think about the patterns of behavior of an individual or maybe a few firms. And then you also take principles of macroeconomics. And that's where you build it up to the big picture and think about how all those interactions work at the country level. If you're doing the DN 710, the single honors three-year degree, you have four additional courses in the first year, exploring economics, data analysis, statistics for economics, as well as economic history. And so all of those, again, it's trying to give you those data skills that go alongside the theory. If you're doing the joint major, what happens after the first year? Year two, there are four more core modules you have to take, and then you take some of the different options that appeal to you. Year three, either you go abroad um, or you do an internship. And in addition, you're going to end up taking some additional econ classes. And then the last year, there are a couple of more required classes and again, options. If you're doing the single honors, there's core in the second year, core in the third year. But again, lots of different options for you to think about what might actually interest you. So what are the different options we offer? Lots of stuff. So there's things on sustainability, health economics, international trade, transport, labor economics, environmental economics. It's just across the board and it changes year to year because as people come and people go, people develop new interests. What we like having is our staff teach options in the things that excite them because then they're excited. That gets you guys excited and it gives you exposure to the absolute frontier of what it is that we think we know about economics and what we think we know changes every time you turn around. We're learning all the time as staff and we hope to get that across to our students as well. So again, I mentioned you can do that law with economics and the economics and finance. Um, those are different programs run outside of us, but again, within those, you take some of the same core classes and have access to some of the same options as those doing straight up economics. Now, the one thing that people always want to ask me about is what about the math? Um, I cannot lie, there is indeed mathematics to economics. When we talk about theory and we talk about modeling, we tend to use math to do that. And the reason why is what that does is it gives us a very rigorous, perfectly logical language to tell the story we're trying to tell. Economics is messy. You know, we're, when they set up the Institute for Advanced Studies in the US, where Einstein went, it ended up being physics. Initially, they were talking about doing it in economics because they said it had all the mathematical rigor of physics plus the lovely mess of the human condition. What we're trying to do is tell stories about the way people behave. And math is one of the tools we use to tell those stories. So how much math is there? There's some. I can't lie about that. It is not everything to the subject. You also need to have the intuition behind it. But that is something that does tend to worry some people. Um, so what do we require in order to get into it? So if you want to do the single honors, uh, you need to get an H5 or higher on your Leaving Cert Math. Um, if you do Econ and Finance, there you need an H4 or higher. 
If you do the joint major, the DN700 through social sciences, there is no entry requirement for mathematics. If you have less than an 03 on your leaving cert, you need to do a class called Intro to Mathematics before you go take that quants class. And again, what we're trying to do is make sure everybody's got that foundation in the math. We don't want people to struggle with that aspect of it. We want them to spend their time thinking about the ideas that we're talking about. So if you don't pass quants, um, then you can't go on to study economics as part of the joint honors in year two and above. Um, so you know, there, there is a mathematical aspect to it, and we work really hard through the support center and everything to try to make sure that people have got what they need. And we try to get everybody on a common foundation before we move on. Do you need to have studied economics at the leaving cert level? No. In fact, you know, it's, it's almost preferred if you don't, because sometimes people pick up bad habits in secondary that we then have to break down. You know, how did I get into economics? Um, when I was in high school, and you can tell by the accent, I'm not native Irish, so I went to high school, not secondary. Um, I was going to go into advertising. You know, my thought was I could write jingles for a living, so still do music and bring home a regular paycheck. And so I went to university and I had to take economics as part of my marketing degree. And my first class was taught by a guy named John Lyons. You know, he had this big, you know, Marxian beard, really long hair, but nothing on top. And the way he described economic theory just clicked with me. It's like, oh, I get it. This actually works with the way I think about things. It really inspired me. The dude totally changed my life. I had never had economics until that first class at university. You don't need to have studied economics in order to consider econ as a degree here at UCD. So you know, what is economics at the end of the day? It's how people behave, thinking about the patterns in the behavior, thinking about how to anticipate what they're going to do. Think about how that is influenced by government policy, the rules of the game, the regulations the boss puts on them, whatever. Then it's thinking about how do you measure that in reality? How do you actually get a handle on how big those effects are? And then it's putting all of that together into whatever it is that interests you. And that's the way we all, as faculty, came to economics. This is something that we're kind of freakishly passionate about. And that is something we really like to get across in the way that we teach. It's something we find absolutely fascinating. It's not about how to make money, although you can take industrial organization, which we'll talk about maybe how you want to run a company. It's not about just money and banking. It's about human behavior, and that's why we're in the school, the College of Social Sciences, rather than in business or something like that. That's what we're about, that's what we do. And if it's something you're interested in, we'd really love to see you here. Um, if there's more information that you'd like to, to think about, um, that is our webpage, ucd.ie slash economics. Um, you follow the path and you'll find lots of information there. You can always just email us at economics at ucd.ie. Feel free to email myself. My email is econhead because I'm the head of school. Um, or Paul Devereaux is our deputy head for undergraduate studies. Um, email him at econteaching at ucd.ie. Um, and if you like Twitter, you know, we do that too. Uh, so feel free to follow us on that. Um, but regardless of whatever it is you choose to study, when you go to the university. The one thing I really hope you walk into it with is a sense of experimentation and adventure. Um, you know, the moms and dads tuning in aren't gonna be happy about this part, but university is one of the last chances in your life where you can really make big mistakes with fairly small consequences. Try things, try classes you didn't think you'd like, try things you thought would be too hard, join clubs that you didn't know whether your friends were gonna do it, talk to people you don't know, experiment, live life, go overseas, do something different, figure out who you are. Because the one thing that I've come to realize as I get older is you know, most people nowadays will have four separate careers over their lifetime. If you experiment through your 20s and finally figure out what you really want to do by the time you're 30, before you get to retire, you'll probably do that about 40 to 45 years. Um, 
going to university is a fantastic experience. I mean, hell, I never left. Um, and take that chance, grab a hold of it, regardless of what may be going on in terms of pandemics, make the most of it you can, because it, it is really an incredible opportunity. Yeah, I hope you do econ, because I love it. Um, but regardless, I hope you pick something that you love too.